Hiya, Barbie. Hi, Ken. You want to go do a podcast? Sure. Jump in. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbies and Kens, Chelsea's of all ages, and everyone else, welcome to Binging Barbie, a Barbie movie podcast. I'm your host, John. And with me, I have my wonderful co-host, did you really think I wouldn't figure it out, Agent J? <laughs> Only I could do the evil laugh. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't think the character in the movie had an evil laugh, so. Um, he did. He did? Maybe he smiled a lot. I don't know. Yeah. One of those two. Anyway, for those of you just joining us, we are a podcast about Barbie movies. Every week we watch one of the straight-to-DVD animated Barbie movies and we rate its story, characters, animation, voice acting, and music to see how it stacks up. This week we'll be talking about the 32nd animated Barbie movie, Barbie Spy Squad. Yeah. Accurate title, I would say. Spy Squad. There are spies. It's more of a squad. Yeah. The, the, the spy is maybe. It's more of a secret agent squad sure yeah yeah <laughs> yeah th- this was released february 8th 2016 so mm-hmm. i i don't know was this kind of it was during it, the height of the cold was... war yeah no i i'm thinking because there were some because this was around the time the year previous we had like one of the Mission Impossible movies, a James Bond movie. So, so spies are kind of in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, spies were more in in the two thousands, specifically yeah. in cartoons. Um, that was really where they saturated the market. Here, they were just, I don't know. I mean, they had the a, a slight comeback because you also had the Jason you, Bourne you did, sequel you did. this year. Yeah, you did. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that they would go here as much sense as any of these Barbie movies make. But yeah, this was directed by Conrad Helton, who's done a lot of these Barbie movies prior Mm -hmm. to this. Um, Mm -hmm. Written by Marsha Griffin, who did um, Princess Power and Rockin' Royals. And then Casey Arnold, this is her first of several Barbie movies. Um... She's also written episodes for Paw Patrol, Doc McStuffins, Lego Friends. So kind of in the Barbie wheelhouse here. Uh, sure. Yeah, we have art direction by Renata Marchand, um, who also worked around um, on other Barbie movies around the same time. And then production design by Patricia Atchison. Um She was also the production designer on Princess Power, which we didn't mention on that episode, so I thought I would bring it up here. Um, And also, she did the um, production design for the recent animated Adams Family movies, Hmm. which I I wasn't able to find much of her concept art, but the stuff that I did find was very good for the Adams Family movies. And yeah, we have music by Gabriel Mann and Rebecca Newbel, so... Again, other people we've we're familiar with at this point. Yeah, the story follows Barbie, Renee, and Teresa. They're gymnasts, like teenage gymnasts, preparing for a big competition. Mm-hmm. And after a meet one day, Renee's aunt Zoe, who's like old cat lady who knits, invites the three of them to a picnic by the Hollywood sign. Not uh, really legal, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and when they arrive, a secret door in the Hollywood side opens and reveals an elevator that takes them down to the headquarters of a secret agency. This is like the first five minutes of the film. Yes. And we're thrown into the spy world. (laughs) Yes, very very like, I feel like I've seen this many times before. It's, oh yeah, we have. Like. It's Men in Black. It's um cats it, it, yeah. versus dogs. It is, yeah. <laughs> Those are the two that I immediately thought of. I know there's others as well. Right, but the I I, I thought that too because most spy movies, you have your main spy person, and plus a couple of people in the world. Yeah, 
And it's really only Men in Black and Cats versus Dogs where you have an entire agency with a lot of people in it. Yeah. But yeah, um, it, it turns out that Renee's Aunt Zoe is actually the re- the leader of this um, International Intelligence and Innovation Agency, mm. also called I-3. Um, and she has decided to recruit these girls. For what reason, we never really find a good one, but... It's because they're good gymnasts. <laughs> yes. Which, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that part. Um, but yeah, Zoe tells them that there's this thief who's been stealing gemstones that um, power up this MP device, EMP device. Um, yeah, the Chaos Emeralds. Basically, or the Infinity Stones. Yeah. <laughs> Or the and, Dragon Balls. One of them. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're magical, shiny MacGuffins. Mm-hmm. Um, so the girls train for like a day under Agent Dunbar and meet with the gadgets inventor, Laszlo. Laszlo. <laughs> yeah, La- Laszlo. Laszlo. Well, we'll get into Laszlo as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Laszlo. Okay. Um. But on their first mission, they almost catch this thief, but the thief ends up escaping. Um, Second mission, same thing happens. And after that, the girls are sent home, which, you know, yeah, they failed their first two missions, so it kind of makes sense. Um, But Laszlo lets them keep their gear for one extra day. And then while they're at gymnastics practice, Barbie realizes that the thief is actually Patricia, who's one of their fellow gymnastics competitors who would have guessed (laughs) me immediately upon seeing patricia yeah me too (laughs) no i saw her it's like hmm here's a guess she's gonna be that cat girl that we saw yeah and then she was and it's like oh okay (laughs) yep so so they chase her back and she actually goes to i3 headquarters (gasps) And sneaks in to see her give the gems to Agent Dunbar. <gasps> Again, immediately when that character was introduced, I'm like, okay, I know exactly where they're going with this. Honestly, I just shrugged that character off. So <laughs> okay. I didn't see the reveal, but I was also just disappointed. I was like, oh, <laughs> really? Okay. I just yeah. thought that he was going to be one of those angry people that trains, but has a soft interior that i don't really care about but no he's the villain which is less interesting yeah and he he's mad that zoe got the promotion to be head of the agency instead of him so Mm. he has this plan to disable all of the servers and blame it on zoe and he actually invites patricia to join his side um but patricia declines it's i think she says like world domination isn't really my thing um she was just doing it for the money And she's a cat girl. Yep. I mean, she's very blatantly Catwoman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, Barbie and the others are able to escape, and they reprogram some of of Dunbar's bots with the help of Laszlo. And Barbie goes to confront Dunbar, um, and things are looking pretty bad for her, but then Patricia shows up, and she's had a change of heart off screen. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> she decided working with the team might be nice. This was never an idea expressed in the, the rest on- of the movie. The only thing that suggests this turn is when Dunbar suggests world domination. That's it. Yeah. I mean, he does have that line of like, you're either on my side or their side. But the, her response is, no, I'm on my side. <laughs> But uh, no, Uh she comes back, she pulls a Han Solo, Mm -hmm. shows up right as the, right at the last moment, and um, Dunbar activates this device, but Barbie is able to remove one of the gems before it causes any damage, and Dunbar is apprehended by the robots. And then sometime later, Barbie and Renee and Teresa are competing in the big gymnastics tournament, and thanks to all of the confidence she gained as a secret agent, Barbie is able to land the complex move that she missed in practice before. You know, when we break down the plot to this very simple structure, it sounds like a better movie. 
what we got is 90% of them training or talking about them wanting to be a spy and 10% actually doing spy stuff. Yeah, that, that's fair. I, I I didn't mind it too much. I, I liked elements of this. But yeah, it's, it's a very standard spy movie plot. Very standard, yes. But again, most of, most of the time it's just them training not really doing anything <laughs> uh, yeah we have all this cool looking spy stuff to look at but we're just looking at it we're not doing anything anything with it yeah lot, lots of toy opportunities with the different spy gadgets lots of time wasting let's just go on <laughs> missions yeah i mean it, it is to be fair unlike anything we've really seen from any of the barbie movies no, but I, I'm no I'm gonna be noticing a trend here. Uh I talked about in the Princess Power movie how yeah. the superhero genre is like one of those things that every cartoon will do at some point. It's the same with the spy genre. Yep. Every cartoon will either have a spy episode or some shows are specifically for spies, like Kim Possible and Codename Kid Next Door. And coming up, we're getting a Starlight Adventure, which is a space adventure, apparently. Yeah. And that's another thing. So it seems like <laughs> they're now going into the, the, the booklet of Cartoon Episode 101, What Ideas Can You Do? Which yeah. genres do we want? We're getting into that now. And we even with um, Puppy Adventure, even though we both kind of like that one, that was like the treasure hunting one slash pet episode yeah yeah so yeah th this is i mean like you're saying it's like they're not only are they looking at these other shows for like what what ideas do we do next they're also like borrowing the plot structures it's also just not very interesting yeah i, like, I feel they like don't a way... do much with barbie being a spy yeah and I think part of that is just like they don't want to have too much of Barbie beating people up. But even like the dress up stuff, there's very little of that. Like you could have Barbie Hitman where she's infiltrating a place by dressing as different people. Or just do what James Bond does and just go in disguise and just listen <laughs> and sneak and get intel. <laughs> Nope, we're just catching a thief here. To, to be fair, James She's Bond... She's a cop, not a spy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was almost thinking like a Batman-type superhero. Yeah, but we already had that movie. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is the Batman to Princess Power's Superman. I guess that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, the, some of the things here, like the plot is relatively simple, but some of the things are very ham fisted. Like the girls being recruited is just oh. like Zoe's yeah. aunt thought they would be good spies. Be, well, she was grooming them from a young age. Or, or that. Yeah, no, she, she was. Because she was watching them since they were kids. Oh. And noticed their potential oh. as gymnasts. And was waiting till they were old enough. You see, there I'd almost want like an... Um, I, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the trailer many times. American Ultra. Where it's like... Sleeper agent gets activated. Hmm. Because then at least you have, like, an explanation for the spy stuff and why they would be the ones chosen to be spies. Because it's like... They're good gymnasts. Yeah. <laughs> Except they're not. <laughs> they, they are good gymnasts. Let's be fair. They are good gymnasts. Yeah. They are They are spectacular spies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. mean, Barbie could do all of the moves except for the one. Except for the one, <laughs> the 
the one that matters in the end. Which, to be fair, John, have you tried landing on two people's shoulders after doing like a huge somersault and flip? I never said I was a gymnast. <laughs> Most of the gymnastic stuff in this is like impossible to do physically. I mean, I don't know. How much Olympics do you watch? I don't know. Enough to know that like some of the stuff here is a little bit inaccurate. It's the benefit of animation. You can make things look more exciting than they are. You know, this film could be better if they went the Johnny English route of having them not be great purposefully and comedically. Yeah. Or even just like, what if it starts out and they're already spies? And they've been training, and now this is their first mission. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have them being gymnasts. You could have them still be gymnasts. Yeah, but what about Chelsea? (laughs) We don't need Chelsea. (laughs) Yeah, but then Barbie has to give Chelsea that lesson about visualizing, the one that she just had herself. (laughs) That she hasn't used. (laughs) It says she hasn't used. Yes. (laughs) That that whole visualization thing, like, it's not bad advice, but the way it's introduced, it feels like Zoe is trying to tell Barbie the good news about our Lord and Savior. The visualization. But they never actually read any verses of the Bible. <laughs> well, well, no, and that it feels like it feels like she's indoctrinating Barbie into some kind of religion. Oh, okay, yeah. Like she's telling Barbie the secret. I see, yes. And then Barbie tries to tell Chelsea, but Barbie has no idea what she's talking about because she's yeah. never actually tried it. Or Barbie's she, like... <laughs> she hasn't successfully done it. Yeah. Yeah, very, very like Scientology. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're this even no... in LA. Yeah, but they weren't paying for that information. So, oh, good point. Yeah. They were doing a lot of work for it, and I don't know that they were getting paid for the work. Well, they got to bump <laughs> up Patricia off the competition, so I guess that uh, helped. Okay. That's, that's where it worked. <laughs> like, okay, let's just add these three 17 year olds to the payroll of our spy agency. I guess they already have low. They they got interns, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm just here for the experience. It's the Disney College program. Come work at Disney World. <laughs> Come work for the spy agency. Yeah. Seventeen year old gymnast. We'll put you out in the field after one day of training. Yep. Here, have a lightsaber. <laughs> Yes, Barbie gets a lightsaber. That's in my notes. Barbie finally has her own lightsaber. I mean, it's it's even before the the sci-fi one. It's more of a Goku extend extender pole or something. I don't know. Yeah, but but it lights up. Yes, it does. It's pretty cool. Yes, it's ridiculous, but it's pretty cool. The gliss. Yes. <laughs> you was the gliss. Uh, she even could use the force to pick it up because she had I know. the thing. It's not even Starlight Adventure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we need a Barbie Star Wars crossover. That's what Starlight Adventure is, apparently. I don't know. I I I, I don't know. Y'all are hyping this up for me. It better be good. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it. I, I I don't I hope I haven't been hyping it up too much because I haven't seen it either, so I'm mm. But yeah, the another thing that I had took issue with is that there's a lot of heavy exposition in the first act. A lot. A lot. And some of the lines are like, I I wrote this one down because I thought I would use it as the quote for the top of the episode. 
is this is Barbie talking to Aunt Zoe at the okay. beginning of a scene. You're the head of a secret agency, and you want us to be secret agents. That that is how the scene starts. You know, it that's... is not. It is not Zoe going. Hey, I am the head of a secret agency, and I want you to be secret agents. It starts with Barbie asking that question, as if that will hide the fact that it is exposition. You know, that sounds like a hook I'd put to the beginning of an essay. <laughs> In this essay, I will argue that <laughs> Barbie Spy Squad is inspired by Cats versus Dogs. The musical. Oh, there's a musical? Well, Cats, the musical. We're oh, waiting cats, for the dog. Cats, part. the musical. And then we'll get the Cats versus Dog uh, trilogy cap. It's the Railway Cat. And then the Kitty Galore DLC. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> we're we're off track here. <laughs> this, we are movie, so off track. This movie references a lot of spy media. Like I, I caught the men in black stuff slash mm-hmm. cats versus dogs. Mm-hmm. The Mission Impossible stuff. The with mm-hmm. the soundtrack especially. Oh yeah. Um bit of the bond. Lots of the gadgets are very bondy. Oh yeah. If Bond was more lipstick or carried lipstick in his pocket i guess there's even some like weird i don't know if this was intentional but like some ghost in the shell connections with like their invisible suits i can't confirm or deny that (laughs) i i can't either it it might just be because i i do feel like the invisible suit might just be a general spy thing when they when they like showed up with the invisible suits, I'm like, oh, cool. The general well, spy thing that's never been utilized in any spy movie. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there has to have been in video games. Yes. Okay, that that might be more like, oh, the. Now I'm thinking of spy video games and how cool it would be if this were like, Barbie Metal Gear. Or Splinter Cell. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I wish they had gone like full. Let let's just be like a parody of old James Bond movies, but with Barbie. That that's what I'm saying. The Johnny English treatment. <laughs> or, or even the not, Austin not, not Powers. Even, not even like that much of a parody. Just like a. Give, give me, sixties Barbie. Austin Powers that's going 60s. on like a globe trotting adventure. Uh, can we move on? Yes, we can move on. <laughs> I do. I do enjoy one of the things about this that I do enjoy is that like it's a very feminine spy movie. Like, there's a lot of emphasis on dress up and makeup and fashion. Um, yes, and and the spy genre could leave like could lead like very heavily into like masculinity and masculine tropes of especially of like violence and then you have like james bond and his relationship with women that Mm -hmm. is questionable yeah Yeah. (laughs) especially in earlier movies oh yeah but yeah it's just like it's a nice thing to add to the spy genre it isn't unique to this barbie movie but it is kind of interesting to see Mm -hmm. and there there is even something i was thinking of of like when they're going through all of their accessories and it's like oh yeah no that makes totally sense if you have like someone who's carrying a purse can carry a lot more gadgets than bond james bond with his tux and that's about it and his tiny pistol (laughs) yep (laughs) and his martini shaken not stirred Varka Martini. Is it? Anyway, I gave the story a three out of five. Um, it was very simple. Yeah, I, not I, terrible, I, but just uh, underutilized. Yeah, I I also gave it a three out of five. I I think there are ways you could 
plus this, but it isn't a bad story either. Like I was never bored. I mean, I was okay. Just because all they did, were doing was training and nothing else. <laughs> you see, you see, I like the the scenes where they're like Laszlo is showing them all the gadgets. And I'm also the- paying attention to the clock when I get bored. And okay. when that happens, I, I make note of like, okay, we're this far in. We should be doing something more than just what we're doing for the past 30 minutes. <laughs> that, that's fair. So yeah, on, on to the characters. We have Barbie. Mm-hmm. Who, as we already mentioned, she gets her own lightsaber. Yeah. This she is a big a moment. She's um, a gymnast. <laughs> her arc is she's like struggling to find confidence. It's it's not a bad arc. It feels pretty standard in the way it's executed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the visualization thing is good advice, but I do feel like the way it's introduced is a little bit odd. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, th- next up, we have Teresa and Renee, who I've combined into one, because as always with these characters, these characters are in every Barbie movie now, and they're always yeah, they the same characters. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're the sidekicks we've seen before. Like, Teresa gets a little bit more. She has a mini arc about overcoming her fears and then a flirtationship with Laszlo. Yeah, the she gets her own Ken. Yes. It's been a while since we had a proper Ken. Yeah. We we need these movies need more Ken. Like Ken Ken, not fake Ken. Yeah. Like like fashion fairy tale Ken. I know, yeah. Or fairy secret Ken. Him too. <laughs> They're the same Ken, but <laughs> Yeah, ne- next up we have Zoe. Um, I I love that her disguise is a cat lady who knits. Like, talk about the person you least assume to be the head of a spy agency. An old lady who knits. Yep. And knits sweaters with cats on them, specifically. Cats, yes. Yeah, I, I do question a lot of her decision making in bringing these 17 year olds in and putting them on a major mission with huge stakes yeah i mean very unrealistic yeah at least they fire them after two failed missions you you see there's my thing though is that like they're smart enough to fire them after two missions but why didn't they fire them after the first mission well everybody fails the first time apparently okay (laughs) <laughs> Good thing there were three gemstones left and not one. Yeah. Good thing. <laughs> they, they brought them in. Okay, we, we have three gemstones left. That means they have one to that they'll lose anyway. Mm-hmm. And then they have a second one that they could potentially lose. And then the third one will we'll bring in... No one. <laughs> no, yeah, no one. There's no, <laughs> there's no scene of her stealing the third gem. It's just... She has it. I have no idea what happens in the climax because all the other agents are just missing. <laughs> yeah. They all evac- evacuated or something. Not evacuated, they evaporated. <laughs> they just disappeared. There was a fire alarm that went off, so. Yes. Not, not a fire alarm, it was a, a general alarm. That too. To, get to the safe but, room. Uh, Played by Kathleen Barr. Yeah, she does stuff. <laughs> But why why do secret agents need to be in a safe room? <laughs> to be safe. What else? They're agents. <laughs> They're spies. There's nothing L- safe listen, about listen, it. Listen, John, this, this secret agency is apparently so incompetent that three high school gymnasts are the best shot they've got. They'd never survive the Cold War. <laughs> yeah. Neither would we, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And we, we would probably survive the Cold War since there wasn't much war going on. But I mean, as spies. Oh, as spies? Yeah, no. <laughs> ne- next up we have the wonderful, the incomparable Laszlo. The nice guy. 
Yeah, he's just a sweetheart. He's so awkward, it's adorable. He is the Ken, but not he Ken. Is, yeah, yeah. He is very reminiscent of Ken, specifically like the fashion fairy tale fairy secret era. Yeah. Just yeah, he's he's Laszlo. Laszlo. That, that's such a, a name. Laszlo. <laughs> every time every time they say it, I think of uh, the Dark Shadows TV show where Uh no, you mean uh what we do in the shadows. Oh what we do in the shadows. That is what I mean. Yes. John keeping me honest here. Um with one of the characters is named Laszlo and another character has a funny accent, so I was always thinking, Laszlo Cravensworth. <laughs> no, it's uh, what's it, Daytona? Yes, Jackie Daytona. <laughs> it's Jackie Daytona. <laughs> we we don't have enough time to get into Jackie Daytona, so I'm just gonna skip right over that. Um, <laughs> I I like how Laszlo is like really cognizant of like the need to be fashionable. <laughs> Like, all of the stuff he designs is just, like, stylish outfits and, like, makeup gadgets and then mm. anti-helmet hair helmets. Okay. That are, like, yeah, of course that would be a thing Barbie would be worried about that James Bond doesn't care about. James Bond gets helmet hair. Okay. But Barbie, you need to you need to be cognizant of that. I guess, yeah. Though, uh, to be fair, I don't know... If James Bond ever gets helmet hair either. Does James Bond wear helmets? Rarely. I, I feel like that's not a James Bond thing to do. Probably well, because he's worried about getting helmet hair. Uh, or he's too busy just not dying. <laughs> while he's up on an airplane. There's a lot of airplanes. Yeah. Anyway, we got Percy. Who's is He's a dog. A robot dog yeah, a robot that dog. talks, yeah, in a British accent. Yeah, he has, he has a fine arc, but it's missing a few steps. He goes he has from an arc. Like, well, because he when he's first introduced, he's like, work, 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 and then over the course of the movie, it's like, oh no, he's not all work. He's like, like he's he likes his squad now, but. The transition arc. between one of those and the other happens over the course of like half a scene in uh-huh. the background. Uh-huh. So yeah, he his design though. He's like that. What was it? That iPod dog thing that you'd play music through. <laughs> Basically, from the from the early two thousands. <laughs> the i dog. I, I mean, don't remember. probably <laughs> something. Yeah. Percy was a no for me. No. (laughs) He was there. Every time the robot animals showed up, I was like, oh yeah, them. (laughs) Patricia. Patricia. I I thought she was fun when she was first introduced. Uh In the way that like Catwoman is fun when she's being a cat burglar. And she had some good like lines and like comebacks and things she's a taunter you know yeah her arc though is like the fact that she so quickly changes her mind off screen it's i think it's just more so it's like man this guy wants to take over the world ah i don't like that i guess i'll take him down yeah I I know why they can't go out and say it like that, but it would have been nice if they could have. Well, yeah, that's what they saw it like that, I guess. Well, but but they make it seem like she's like fully now on Barbie's side. By the end, yes. Yeah. I I don't know. I I I could have used with a more interesting. You see that that's part of the issue is that like good spy movies tend to have like somewhat ambiguous morality Mm -hmm. and you can't have that in a barbie movie also a lot of her scenes were rushed because most of the film was again barbie training yeah 
Yeah, th- this is a character that might have been benefited from more time. I do like that last scene, though, of her encouraging Barbie at the competition. I thought that was a nice moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then last up we have the villain of the movie, Agent Dunbar. <sighs> <sighs> yep. <laughs> He's the standard villain for this kind of movie. Such a boring villain. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't even have like the princess power villains like campiness. I didn't even just... want him to be the villain. It was just just <laughs> let him be that stern trainer guy that doesn't care that we'll we'll never see again after the training sequence. Yeah. Nope. They just make him the villain. It's like ah, oh, but you had you had Patricia the cat girl. <coughs> The actual fun part. What if she had a mission and she was yeah. using the crystals to get into something for something <laughs> even bigger? But no. You got dung bar. <laughs> Ooh, you got him. Sick Thank burn. You. I just thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I-, I gave the characters a three out of five. Yeah, me too. It might be a bit harsh, but again, not much is really done with them. I, I'm feeling like I'm being a bit too nice with a three out of five. I, I, I mean, may... it's better than Princess Power, ish. Not really. Yeah, I might, I might be dropping mine to a two point five out of five. Oh boy, I'm keeping mine where it is. That, that's fair. Now, what I do like somewhat is the animation. Mm. Um, I love the night scenes where it's like all of the neon and they're riding their motorcycles. That's cool. And the action does look pretty good. It, it yeah. It's it's an improvement from like three musketeers which was a, lo- a long time ago but that one like the cartwheel flips. flips and all of it really? it was like they didn't quite sell it but here you just you don't even think about it it's just like they pull it off yeah she pulls out a lightsaber does a pole vault with it yeah it's pretty neat <laughs> yep all of the flips and the tricks and the you buy it because they're gymnasts unlike yeah. a farm girl yeah doing farm stuff <laughs> and doing cartwheels and only cartwheels <laughs> she cartwheeled so much in she did and nothing else just cartwheels <laughs> yeah here it's just like it, it feels fun to watch the action mm-hmm. scenes um the character models are pretty good this is like well, a bit of a mix between the Rainmaker and Arc production styles. Pretty good, yeah. So, uh, here, here, here's what it is. So, I, I have, I'm not gonna say the score yet, but my score for the last few are exactly the same. Okay. Um. And part of this is because I feel like each film, they're improving one specific aspect that looks great, but then something else is not as utilized as well. And so it just remains the same. So it's good, but some other parts are toned down. Yeah. Here, I think the lighting on the skin texture is not as pretty as before. Okay. Okay. And I, I know that they're speci- specifically because these character models have a new skin texture. You know, you can actually see and feel texture. Yeah. But light works differently on different textures. Before, when our characters were plastic, it was more reflective and looked prettier. Here, it's rougher and it doesn't reflect as much. Okay. That... that does make sense that's light theory for you (laughs) i guess you you know more about this animation stuff than i do yeah no i also it also just reminded me a lot about um star wars rebels which had a similar 
skin texture, although I didn't really love their skin texture design there. Here it looks better. I've been watching a lot of 3D animated shows. Okay. And so I'm just comparing how the skin looks. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't bother me, but I it mean, didn't bother me. But I, I was also really just really hard to rate them because it's like I don't yeah. think this is better. I don't think it's worse. It's just about the same. Um, the Barbie model is interesting because yeah. when her hair is pulled down, she doesn't look like a Barbie to me. But when it's pulled up in the ponytail, I instantly get it. She she has very big hair. That too, yeah. Like this has been a problem before in the past where pulled down hair is confusing, but for the most part they've been able to do it. Here, yeah. I don't it's really difficult to see until it's pulled up in the ponytail. Yeah. But no, they're all really well done. Yeah. Good character models in general. The outfits are pretty good as well. They're fun, yeah. I, I do also think that a lot of the um tech is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, I like the way that things sort of materialize and dematerialize where you sort of have these like pixely type blocks that I, I thought it was cool. But yeah, R- I, right. As I said, but like we've been getting so much of that with the MCU and nanotech. <laughs> so here, here it was different enough that I was like, okay. Yeah, no, it's different enough. It's shinier. Yeah. Also shinier are the robot animals, and those are abominations. I mean, the cat was something. (laughs) What What's the point of them? It's really, it's really that they speak with so much emotion. (laughs) That's just confusing me. Yeah, they they need more of a Megan vibe. Yeah. Megan. So yeah, I gave the animation a 4 out of 5. And I gave it a 3.8, which is what I've been giving it recently. <laughs> they, need, they need that final push of both everything, of everything. Yeah. They need that push. <laughs> so next up we have the voice acting, and Erica oh Lindbeck is playing oh Barbie. Boy. Yeah. I, I thought she did a mostly solid job. I noticed something about this performance. Yeah. So, with Diane Keene, she was the other actress before. Yeah. What I've noticed is that when they had Diane Keene replace Kelly, Diane was trying hard to sound like Kelly, but not quite matching. Here, yeah. Erica is doing whatever the heck she wants. She's not trying to sound like Kelly, she's trying to do her own performance. Yeah. And her performances, the emotion that she portrays in this film, really work. They're great. But she doesn't sound like Barbie. Okay. I I thought she sounded like a different Barbie than Kelly Sheridan, but still Barbie. I didn't quite get that. Uh, and for me, it's also because I, I also know Erica from other stuff that I've seen her. And her voice is in the, like more of a lower register than typically where I associate barbie to be with yeah there's also a little bit she's also a bit rougher in the way she speaks yeah i i did notice some of that um i honestly it didn't bother me all that much i think the the thing that did stick out to me is um she has some pretty heavy-handed exposition that she oversells a bit Mm mm-hmm um, but no, she did a she gave a really good performance, but like I said, I didn't quite hear the Barbie voice. Okay. But it was still really good. Yeah. Next up we have um Ian Hanlon who plays um Laszlo. Mhm. And he he's a voice actor who has worked on Shows like My Little Pony and Johnny Test. And I don't know. He just fits the character. 
Honestly, this is his uh, typecast. Okay. Because he plays these nerdy sounding characters. Yeah. All the time. Makes <laughs> sense. Yep. Oh, we we forgot to mention um Erica Lindbeck um is a very very prolific voice actor. She has a very ton of prolific. credits. Um, she does a lot of work on especially anime and video games. Um, so Sailor Moon, the Evangelion Netflix dub, Persona Five, Mortal Kombat, a whole bunch of stuff. More recently, she's been gaining popularity because of a show called Hell of a Boss. Okay, where she plays like a fan favorite character called Luna. Okay. Yeah, she she has a lot of work in the a industry. Lot. So, yeah. Um, we also have Stephanie Shea who plays Renee, who is also very prolific. Oh, um, she, her she has so much on her resume. Yeah. Um. Also, she does a ton of anime. Um. She's in Your Name, Bleach, a Naruto. A ton. Yeah. All all of these voice actors. It's fun to look through their roles Mm -hmm. and see what you um recognize um rebecca hussein plays patricia um she's a tv and voice actor she actually does a lot of like live action stuff Mm -hmm. um she was in supernatural and the flash and she was in an uncredited role in one of my favorite movies okja Mm mm-hmm um, K- Kathy Westluck plays Zoe. I thought she was really good in this. Um, yeah, no, I think this is her b- first big role with Barbie because before she was like smaller side yeah. characters. Yeah, and she's been around since Nutcracker. She has been around pop- for a while, popping in for like a role every once in a while. But I um, think her last film with this was in the first Mariposa. I think. Yeah. I actually no, I think she voiced some like animal characters at one point. But I, I would have to double check to be sure. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I I just thought she did such a great job because Zoe is like this dual role of the head of the secret agency and then the cat lady who goes to the gymnast tournaments. And the way she plays both of those characters, like when she's the cat lady Zoe, Aunt Zoe, um, she sells her lines very specifically so that you can kind of tell that's not the character's actual voice. So yeah, I, I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, no, it's always great to have Kathy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I gave the voice acting actually a 4 out of 5. Yeah, I gave it a 3.5, which is our standard solidness for me. Yeah. And yeah, last up we have the music. Music, yeah. It's a bit of a mixed bag for me. Um, It's very reminiscent of Mission Impossible, both in good and bad ways. Mm-hmm. Um, where where the last score felt like it was inspired by John Williams and Goonies and Indiana Jones. This one feels more like it's generic spy. Yeah, it, it's more directly. Yeah, it it doesn't have the same sort of added oomph to it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there are certain scenes though where the music is very good. There are, and that's to mainly when they're doing their spy stuff, but yeah. other stuff. The, the training scenes are when it's the worst. Yeah. Uh, and also the original stuff, I don't think worked that well as well. Yeah. The original song is so-so. Yeah. So yeah, so, I, I give so. the music a 3.5 out of 5. And I give it a 3.3 3 out of 5. So yeah, that that leaves my final score as a 17 out of 25 or a 68.0%, which is a 3.4 <laughs> on our five-star scale. I give it a 16.6, which is a 66%, and a 3.3 five-star rating. Yeah. 
we're we're again not doing um rankings in these episodes anymore we're not going to tell you where this falls because we're getting ready for our big rankings episode Mm -hmm. um, where you can look forward to seeing where this lands in our overall rankings yeah Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. Make sure to follow us on social media. We're Binging Barbie Podcast on Instagram, at Binging Barbie on Twitter, and Binging Barbie, a Barbie movie podcast on Letterboxd. We'll be back next week to talk about Barbie's first sci-fi movie, Barbie Starlight Adventure. I, I'm excited for this one. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, this is, I'm hopeful. Which maybe I shouldn't be, but th- this is one I've been looking forward to this entire series. Hopefully there's some fun references to talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll see you all then. Bye. <laughs>